Hi, this is Joshua at TechSpec, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at contacts and contact groups in the new Gmail. So, um, especially for Outlook users, there's a few um, slight differences, but it's also just a matter of getting to getting oriented and seeing how you can interact with contacts and create contact groups. So here we are in Gmail, and um, one of the things you'll notice is that um, anyone you email back and forth with on a regular basis will start to auto-complete in your Compose window. So not even talking about, about contacts yet, but notice by just typing the letter J, all the people who I email the most in the order in which I email them the most comes up uh, right away. And this will work for, for any letter. And it doesn't matter whether you see for G, George Lopez comes up, but also so does Dr. Gomez because um, it's just looking. So that doesn't necessarily mean they're in my contacts. It means that Gmail pays attention to who I contact the most. So it can behave like they're in my contacts, but um, it's a good thing to sort of know the difference and it'll just, it pays attention to your most contacted people. But so how can we add people to our contacts? Well, there's lots of ways. And before we even go into the contact section or your address or book, if you want to think about it that way, is let's look at how we can do this from just Gmail. So here we have an email from Josh Harris. And by just hovering my cursor over the name, the little card comes up and I can click add to contacts. I can do this if I open this email as well by hovering over the picture um, or his name as well. And if I just click add to contacts, voila, he's in my contacts. So what about an email thread that has several people on it? Well, let's come down here. If I hover over Joshua, then this contact card comes up. If I hover over Stacy, then this contact card comes up. And if I need to, I can add to contacts from there. So that's a way to do it sort of on the fly. And it, it doesn't matter whether the email is read or not. Um, everyone's name in it, I can hover over their name and add to contacts. But what if we want to get into our actual contacts? Well, if you were in the old Gmail, you might click here and you would expect to find your contacts and, and tasks there, but that's not where it is anymore. Tasks is now split out to the sidebar here, but we're gonna have to go up to the uh, Google Apps array, also known as the Rubik's Cube, also known as the Waffle, to find our contacts. Now this video is about contacts and contact groups, and that's what, where we're gonna be all here. You might see this other app called Groups, and that's has nothing to do with your contacts. It's usually set up, if you're in an education domain, it's usually set up by your Google uh, admin, administrator, and we're not gonna do anything with this Groups app. Um, and most people don't use it very much, so just ignore this. Don't go into Groups. So when we open up Contacts, um, if you've just come over from Outlook, you might, and you had a bunch of um, contact groups or contact lists, then those might be populated here on the side. If you're in an education domain and there's some pre-populated um, email aliases, for example, if you say print, if you type principles um, at myschool.org or whatever your domain is, and it just automatically populates the principles, those might be here on the side. But your standard is going to be my contacts, which I'm looking at in red here is the 49 people in my contacts list. Um, and just looking over here, you can see some of them are already in groups. And we know what groups, for example, uh, Mr. Jaramillo here is in the Council 1617 and Site Leaders. Those are different contact groups. If we look over here, it's the Site Leaders group. Here's the Council group. Site Leaders has 14 people in it. The Gmail Training Group has seven people in it. This is how you read all that stuff. Your most contacted people. Now, again, these people are not all necessarily in my contacts. Um, and I can tell who is because it says my contacts and then what other groups there are. But there's sort of a handy thing here. I could go through and check them all individually and then do add to my contacts. But if I just select the whole thing and then click add to my contacts, it automatically adds those 20 people or the most contacted people into my contacts, which then makes it easier to add them into groups and such later, later on. You have other contacts, which these are um, sort of your tier. most contacted is the people you email with and receive emails from. The most other contacts are pretty close ones. 
Um, you see some of these are in my domain, some of these are not in my domain. You'll also find the directory, but the directory is better for searching. It's not really a good place to start any tasks because it's every user in your domain. If you're an education domain and your students have um, Google accounts, even if they don't have Gmail turned on, they will all be listed here. And um, most education domains have one pattern for the adults and they have another pattern, email pattern for students. So for example, looking here, um, I know that this is a, a staff member or faculty member because it's first name dot last name, and this is a student because it starts with their student number, but that's gonna vary from organization to organization. So um, we could just go through and, and use, so for example, if we wanted to click on one person, you'll, I can click on there and email him from here, and it opens up a pop-up window off uh, on the side on a Mac. But um, that's probably not what you're going to be in the more menu. You have all sorts of other things you can do here. Um, but let's look at these persons. So Arthur Gilmore is not my contact. So I might want to add him to my, con or this would not necessarily add him to my contacts. Um, this would just be to add somebody to your contact. So I would manually type in, um, an email address here if that's what I wanted to do, and then I would click add. I could add another one, another dot email at org, and then add both of those, and they would be, you can see this message, they've been added to my contacts, but what I can do with the person who's checked is you see this other button that says groups. I can see which groups he's in. He's in my contacts and the council one if I wanted to add him to Gmail training and then take him out of the council, I can check and uncheck the boxes and then hit apply. And that's great, but one contact at a time is fine, but really groups is where you're gonna get a lot of, um, you're gonna leverage this, you're gonna be able to do it, uh, use your groups in email, in Google Calendar, and in Google Drive, and we'll take a look at all those things. So let's start a new group and let's say I'm gonna start an ed tech group the folks in EdTech. So I say, okay. And you'll see my group has been, I'm still in just my con in my contacts. That's why this is red. And my group is here. And see, this group is empty. So there's a couple different ways I can add people. I can click on the little person plus, and that would be to add them. So I'm going to add George, and I'm going to add Celia. Now they're automatically populating because those people are already in my group. Uh, already in my contacts, excuse me. I can expand the window if I want to see a little bit better. Um, I'm going to add the email address this is coming from, so edtech at alisall.org. Um, I would separate with comma, and then I will add Joshua Harris. Okay, once I click add, there you go. The group is made. If later I need to add more people, I can come here into the person plus or Let's go into my most contacted people, and let's say I'm going to add um, Monica Onso. I would click on her, then come up to groups, and then check the box and hit apply. So now I have this EdTech group with five people. So what can I do with it? Well, you know, in your most basics, you're going to be able to come into Gmail, hit compose, and now when I say EdTech, see EdTech group comes up and I click on it and all my folks are there and it's ready to, to go and email. But let's take a look at calendar as well. So let's say I needed to schedule something with all of my people there. So I might start an event, call it EdTech group meeting. And then when I go more options to invite people, I say EdTech, Oh, you know, since I just created the group, sometimes you need to refresh calendar. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to add our title back. A tech group. Now, see, even after I typed ed, it was coming up, but now I have ed tech group, and then it will individually list out all the different people. So if I were to um, click save on this, it would send them all an invitation. Um, I don't actually want to do that, so I'm just going to X out of this and discard the changes. Uh, the last place, it's it's also really useful 
is in Google Drive when we are sharing documents with folks. So let's say I have this text dependent questions or, or these slides and I need to share them with that team or share them with that group that I've created. As soon as these load and I have my blue share button, see it has the padlock telling me that this isn't shared with anyone right now. Now I could go in here where I need to add people and individually add all their names or I could just type EdTech and the EdTech group comes up and they're automatically populated. And then when I click send, they'll all be shared on this. And it doesn't have to just be a Google Drive file type. Anything that I've stored in Google Drive, so if it were video, if it were PDFs, um, images, anything I can share in Google Drive, I can share using um, the group contacts. So let's look at maintaining a group. So this is something I maintain. This is a group I created. So these are our site principals, and there's a couple of people who have um, been promoted and are no longer principals. So um, I would, how I would remove them is I would select the folks who um, are no longer site principals or no longer need to be in this group. Um, you'll notice my tech council group, that's 16, 17, that changes a little bit every year. So I select those people, I come up to the groups button again, and they are no longer site leaders because they are now at the district office. So I undo and apply. And then you'll notice my group went from 14 down to 12. So that's how you pull people out of groups. Sometimes what I've seen people do is select and then they come over and delete the contact. You don't wanna do that, that removes them. Um, you'll have to go back and add them to a to my contacts. If you, you know, this person I still want in my contacts, maybe he's just not in the group. I don't want to delete the group. That's certainly not what I want. Deleted contact doesn't take them just out of this group. The way you do that again is you come up to the groups button and uncheck where you don't want them anymore. Okay, well, that has been um, contacts and contact groups and Gmail. I hope you found that useful and happy Googling.